Okay, I think I'm back. Hello, folks. This is Griff. I'm having technical difficulties. I think that there's more people having technical difficulties right now than at any other time on the planet. Seriously, any other time. And everybody feels really powerless. <laughs> and that's kind of what I want to talk about. In this time of COVID virus, where we're all sheltering in place and entertaining each other online and keeping our distance and washing our hands constantly and spraying off all of our, um, Hey Redwood. Awesome. And thanks for sharing the previous episode. Um, so now in this time of COVID virus, we're having to do all these things. We're all in this together. Globally, we're all in this together and we're all like trying to do our best to like wash our hands and keep all our distance and spraying off all of our shared equipment with Lysol and stuff. And I've done all that stuff. And also, we're just, there's a lot of people who are getting really stressed right now because there's this, and if you don't know why you feel stressed, it's because you probably feel powerless. This is like not something we can fight. A lot of times we go into like fight, flight, or freeze or whatever, and like we're not sure what to do with the disease. And so it's really confusing. And so when I feel powerless like this, accepting that I don't have control is really, really difficult. But once I get there, then I ask myself, what can I help? So I've been quoting Mr. Rogers. I oh, know that's kind of cheesy a little bit, but I've been quoting Mr. Rogers a lot lately because his mom told him during World War II, I believe, she, in the middle of this crisis where everybody's like running around, like, ah, what's going on? Oh my God. And she's like, look for the helpers. And so that's what I'm inviting you to do. Look for the helpers. I love seeing those young people who are like shopping for the older people who are more susceptible to COVID. I love those heroes. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you something that you can do at home to help wildlife in a big way that will take very little, very little effort. So let me see if I can turn this around. Hey, April, look for the helpers. That's right. Okay. So we're going to come over here and you guys are like, why is this nature dude hanging out at the bathroom? And it's because I want to show you these moths where they go. There they are. Look at that. It's beautiful. Look at that. It's beautiful. And then there's some webs up there, but no more spiders. They probably got eaten by hummingbirds. If you don't want spiders in your eaves, let me turn this around. If you don't want spiders in your eaves, come on, turn around now. Um, then put a hummingbird feeder. Because hummingbird feeders love to, um, hummingbirds love to eat spiders because they're one of the few birds that can hover into an eve and really get the spider. So those of you who got spider phobias, like my good friend Jasmine, she's hell scared of spiders. Hummingbird feeder. Anyways, what are those moths doing up there? Does anybody know what those moths are doing? Why do moths like light so much? How many of you have even really thought of that? I think a lot of people haven't thought of that before. There was a lot of moth memes going around for a while, and people really didn't talk about why there's moths at light. So the reason why there's moths gathering around light is because moths, moths have been here for a long time on the planet, okay? And they lunar navigate. They use bright stars and the moon to help them with directions, okay? So moss always, scientists believe, etymologists, study insects believe that um, moss keep the moon at an angle and that's how they can fly. And so then along came artificial moons like this, okay? And messed up the whole entire moth game, okay? Because now moths see that and they start doing spins around it because their navigation is thrown off. A lot of people go, oh, they like it because it's warm, which may be the case for some insects, but a lot of night flying insects use the moon and stars to, for navigational purpose, purposes. And that's called phototaxi. So there's your 50 cent word for the, the day. Hey, Sherry and Lorena. And um, so moths are positive phototaxi. So that means light attracts them. So there's negative phototaxi. So can you think of any animals that have a negative reaction to light? Um, how about roaches? You guys are like, mm, I don't know about roaches. I've never seen one in my house. If you go to a dirty house or a place that has lots of roaches, some places you can have a clean house and still have roaches. But if you go to a place with lots of roaches and you turn off the light, they're like, no, and they run really fast and get away from you. And that's because they have negative phototaxi. 
So positive phototaxy means attracted, and that's what that's what moths got, okay? Because they're lunar navigating, and moths are fascinating. There's more types of moths than there are butterflies, and they're closely related. And moths also do pollination business, okay? And they pollinate, you know, some during the day, like the hawk moth and the hummingbird moth that looks just like a hummingbird. They they're out during the day, but a lot of moths are out at night, and a lot of them pollinate night blooming flowers, okay? So maybe you and and you know moths moths are attracted to smell so usually moth flowers smell really good think like it's a jasmine or wisteria maybe both wisteria and the moth pollinating flowers are often white so they can see them and they pollinate cactuses and all kinds of different stuff so pretty interesting there's more interesting moths over here that i'm going to try to show you and some moths spend the vast majority of their life as caterpillars on plants and you're like oh they're gonna eat my plants well we have caterpillars and, th and and all over our plants here at humboldt redwood state park and have you ever heard anybody come back from a whole redwood state park and go i really liked the park were it not for all the bite marks on the plants there goes a big old loud tractor no one ever says that no one ever says i went to yosemite and it was nice except for there was bite marks on all the plants no one ever says that okay so Here's some more moss. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them because they're like way up here. But there's some interesting different types of moss here. And see all those spider webs? Okay, so maybe those spiders were eaten by hummingbirds because hummingbirds can hover and they can get the spiders in the eaves. And so the spider's gone, but the web is still there and it's catching, it's kind of like a ghost net. You know, like the, when the fishermen have a big net for their commercial fishing and then it gets damaged and they don't want to haul it all the way back. So they just throw it in the ocean and it floats around the ocean. And then a bunch of fish and sea turtles and dolphins get caught in it and it gets heavy and it like goes down for a while. And then they all decay off and then that net floats back up and then it catches a bunch more stuff and it just keeps harvesting over and over and over again. That's the kind of stuff, that's what your porch light is doing. It's, hor it's, it's harvesting moths over and over and over again because when they get attracted to that, they fly around it until they get exhausted and die, okay? And those spider webs, cobwebs that you left on your porch, so here's the motivation to get the cobwebs away. Um, those are just catching moths and butterflies and other things over and over again, they're like ghost nets. So you can really help wildlife and you're thinking, oh, it's just moths. Caterpillars, 96% of all the birds on the planet feed caterpillars to their young. Okay, it's the most important food item for baby birds. And if you're late to this, I'm going to do the same exact talk at 3:30 on the Humboldt Redwood State Park page. But this is a way that, in all this powerlessness that we're facing right now, this is a way you could be helpful because we're having what some entomologists, some scientists are calling an insect apocalypse. Okay, because of our pesticides and our habitat conversion and our invasive plants. But we can do something about it. We can plant native plants. We could get motion detector lights. We can get amber colored lights. Okay. We can get downward facing lights. I like motion detector light idea best. And we won't continuously harvest insects. And then those insects can do their pollination business. They can chew on some plants. Who cares if they chew on plants? And um, they can feed birds. Now, some of you are like, well, I got a bug zapper. Look up bug zappers. Bug zappers don't get biting insects. They get moths. Okay, and I got news for you. Most moths don't even have mouths. Yes, you heard that right. They don't even have mouths. A lot of moths don't have mouths. Some moths do, you know they do, because they chew clothes and stuff like that. But a lot of moths, they eat as caterpillars and then they become adults. They come out of their cocoon, chrysalis, and they, um, and they don't have mouths and they just mate and they don't live very long. And so when you have your light on, they don't have tons of energy reserves and they just fly around your light and they get exhausted and they never mate. So, and they can't, it's not like they can like run out of energy and go eat some more because they don't have a mouth. I mean, imagine that. That would suck. So, um, please turn off your porch light clean off your cobwebs and if you want more information on the subject go to Xerces Society X-E-R-C-E-S it's the conservation group for pollinators and insects and um, invertebrates like mussels like freshwater clams and stuff super interesting group and Xerces is the name of the first butterfly that went extinct in California and it was beautiful and it's a shame but once again I just want to let you guys know that there are things you can do to help wildlife. Does anybody have any questions? I know I'm 45 seconds ahead of you, but 
Let me see if you guys got any questions. Thank you, Ann. Yeah, I think it's interesting too. Are you the guy from Stranger Things? Uh, he can't dance and I can, so the answer is no. Um, can you use a kind of porch light that does not track moss? You know, look that up. I read that um, amber lights um, work better than yellow lights. And also, if, they have, if they're facing the sky, it does this refractive thing that really attracts insects. So you at least want to cover on top. Okay? You're welcome, Derek. Hey, Emily. Lorena. So, what's up, Barbara? So, if you guys have any questions, let me know. They love my nightshades. Interesting. Oh, you know what? Yeah, the tomato hornworm is a type of moth. And I'm going to actually plant tomato plants for the tomato hornworm because I like them. I think they're super cool. So, if there's any questions, let me know. So, again, there's little things you could do to help wildlife. And I hope to bring them to you. I want to talk about our park, our Humboldt Redwood State Park. But I also want you to, to, when you come out to this park and you see how beautiful it is, I want you to know that it's beautiful and there's animals here because of the native plants. And that you can replicate that in your yard. You can have your own park. You can name it after yourself or your mama or something. And you could plant native plants and you'd have butterflies and they would be laying their eggs. And when people came over and they said, you have bite marks on your plants, um, you say, that's because I have butterflies and nobody's mad at too many butterflies in your yard. No one's going to meet you on the dating app and come over your house and be like, oh, I'm sorry, this is never going to work out. You have way too many butterflies in your yard. That's not going to happen. Okay. So plant native plants and what's up, David? And um, plant native plants, get up. A light, like if you can't afford to buy a, a motion detector light, get a motion detector light or get an amber light and downward facing and turn off any unnecessary lights. And at night, if you have lights on your house, cut, shut your curtains so they don't come to the windows. Also, people can see in your house really good if you got lights on your house with the curtains open. You might not want that. So anyways, I'm going to jump over to Humboldt Redwood State Park page. Thank you. Please like and share um, our live streams. We do them every day at 3 o'clock on all kinds of different subjects. And we would love for you to know about your parks because you own them. You own them. And we work for you. Anybody who has this patch on works for you. And we would love to show you your property. So let us know. How do you find what's native? Great question, Barbara. Go to Native Plant Finder, National Wildlife Federation's Native Plant Finder. Okay, And you can put in your zip code. And they can find what's native according to your zip code. Okay? That's how you can find out. Or you can go to your state's Native Plant Society in California. We have California Native Plant Society. Awesome group. And they'll help you understand what's native. Okay? All right. So I'm going to jump over to Humboldt Redwood State Parks and do the same talk at 3.30. So if you're late to it and you want to see it, um, join me there at 3.30. And I will talk to you guys later.